Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're taking a look at the free app that lets you create 3D motion capture from your phone camera. So motion capture has up to this point only really been possible with a pretty expensive mocap setup consisting of a suit, gloves, and some fairly pricey software. But the guys over at Rococo, who are already pretty well known in the motion capture space, have just released a new app that captures motion directly from video without the need for a suit or any tracking markers. And best of all, it's completely free. So let's have a quick look at how we can use it and what kind of results we can get. First, we need to head over to Rococo Video from our desktop and create a free account. And I'll leave a link down below so you can find that nice and easy or just head to rococo.co forward slash CG shortcuts. Then once you've signed up and verified your account, you'll land on this page where you can view a few tutorials and learn the software or just get straight into it by creating a new scene. And we'll just name our scene something super creative like scene one. Then it's going to ask if you want to record a video straight from your device. So a webcam or camera connected to your computer or you can choose to upload a pre-recorded video. So let's go with that. And just make sure your videos are either MP4, WebM or MOV file types and no larger than 300 megabytes. And a couple of tips when you're recording your videos, you'll get the best results if your subject is fully in frame, although you can record a mid-length shot as well, which should still work. Also make sure the only thing moving in your shot is your subject. So keep your pets out and try to limit any movement from curtains or blinds. And you also wanna make sure your camera is perfectly still. So if you're shooting on your phone, you'll need to rest it on a flat surface or chuck it on a tripod. The software also has trouble tracking darker colors. So avoid wearing any black clothing. And it also seems to work in landscape or portrait mode, but just try and make sure no limbs are moving outside of frame or being obstructed by other parts of your body. So go ahead and record something goofy like this and transfer it over to your computer. Then back in Rococo video, we'll drag the clip into here and we can even edit the clip before we run the tracker. So you could record all of your motions in a single clip and just cut each movement here if you like. And when you're happy with that, it's probably a good idea to rename this something descriptive as well, because you might end up with loads of these clips in here. Then we can click here to turn it into an animation. And that'll just take a few minutes to process. So in the meantime, we need to download the free Rococo Studio software. And there's a link down below to that as well. And we'll get that installed on our desktop as well. And just log in with the same credentials we used in Rococo video. Then in here, we've got a bunch more tutorials about using the software. So if you wanna go deeper, it's definitely worth checking those out. But we can also find the scene we created in Rococo video in here now, if that has finished processing. And if you don't see anything in here yet, just try refreshing up here a few times. But let's go in there. And here in the studio, we can test our mocap animation on a generic mannequin character. And if we look over here, we've got our first animation all processed now. So let's double click on that to apply it to the character, which brings up the timeline. And we can also frame up on our character a bit better in this window. So let's hit play and see how that looks. And I'll just overlay the original video as well so you can see how close it is. And I have to say it's done a pretty decent job. Probably not quite as precise as when using a suit, but it's definitely a pretty good starting place considering all we used was a simple video we shot on our phone. And we've also got a few tools we can use to improve our mocap. If we click here, by default we've got locomotion enabled, which is basically an algorithm to help snap the feet onto the floor like so. So probably best to keep that on. And we can also make sure the toes interact with the floor correctly with this toggle as well. And I'll just zoom in a tad so you can see that. Again, best to keep this on, I think. We can also switch the views up here. So we could take a look at the side view, which does show a problem I ran into quite a bit while testing this, in that the animation always seems to be leaning forward, which might be due to the angle I've shot the video on, but we should be able to correct this in Cinema 4D anyway. So let's switch back to the front view and we'll head over to the export tab. And I just used all the default FBX settings here but you will have an easier time retargeting joints if you switch this to Mixamo, which has a better integration with Cinema 4D, as we'll look at very shortly. Then just choose a directory on your computer, and I usually work at 24 frames per second, so I've set that here as well. And now we can export this out 
and hop over into Cinema 4D. So in a fresh scene, I'll just drag that exported FBX file directly into here from the output folder. And we'll go with the default settings here, which gives us our animated mocap skeleton, which automatically starts from a T pose, which is quite handy. And it's also automatically set our project to 24 frames per second to match the mocap data. So let's give that a play. And it looks pretty good apart from that slight lean forward. But let's see how we could go about applying this to a character. So we'll take a look for a pre-built character in our asset browser. And I think the puppet might be a good option, which is what I use for the example render. So we'll load in the male puppet and we can close this now. And I might just move this guy over here so we can see our mocap as well. And we're going to apply this animation to this character. And the easiest way to do that is to grab our mocap animation, which we could also rename so we don't get confused. And we'll hit Shift C to bring up the commander. And let's add a character definition to this, which gives us this tag here. And inside there, we can access the character definition manager, which will allow us to match the character rig with our animated skeleton. And if we pop this open, these are the joints that make up our skeleton, like the spine and the legs, etc. So we'll just need to make sure they match the corresponding bones in our character definition, like the legs, for example, down here. But thankfully, because we chose Mixamo mode back when we exported this, it's used the correct naming conventions that will allow us to automatically connect this up by just clicking the Extract Skeleton button up here. And you can see that's automatically linked up all 63 joints. And if we click through these, you can see the corresponding joints from our skeleton have been populated in here. So we can close this now. And finally, to apply this to our character, we need to grab the character solver tag on our puppet and drag our character definition into the source character slot, like so. And now if we play this, the mocap skeleton is now driving the character solver and we get the exact same animation on there. And because our puppet guy also has a fancy control rig applied to him, we can fix the leaning forward by just grabbing one of these controllers and just bringing that back to straighten him up a bit. And we could also tweak the foot controllers as well and have them a bit flatter on the ground. And to get a good look at this without those distracting controllers everywhere, we can switch to geometry only on playback view. And if we play this now, there's our completed character, which looks like this with a few redshift materials applied. And here's a few more attempts at this process. And I've actually used characters from Mixamo for these. So if you're interested, I'll quickly walk you through how to set that up as well. If you head over to mixamo.com and switch to characters, just pick any character you like. I'll just grab the ninja guy and we'll hit download. And you could do an FBX, but I found changing this to Collada works a bit easier. So let's choose that and download that. Then in a fresh scene in Cinema 4D, we can drag our Ninja DAE file straight into here with all the default settings. And we'll also drag in another mocap export out of Rococo Studio as well, which opens up in a new project. So we'll just copy that and paste it back here in our Ninja scene. And just to keep it organized, let's put our mocap in a null and call it mocap. And same with our ninja character. And we'll pop these open. Just like we did before, we need to add a character definition to our mocap. And we'll also copy that tag to our ninja skeleton as well. And because both of these are set up in Mixamo mode, we can go into the character definition manager in both of these and automatically extract the skeletons. And we'll do that in both tags. Then all that remains to do is grab the tag back on the character. And this time we need to generate a character solver, which was already created for us in the previous example. But we do that by just clicking here. And just like we did before with the solver selected, we just need to drag the mocap definition into the source slot of our solver. And we'll also hit control D and just make sure our scene frame rate matches our mocap frame rate of 24 frames per second. And now if we stretch out our timeline, show geometry only, 
and hit play. We've now applied another goofy animation I made on my phone of some pretty dodgy looking ninja moves. And that's about it really. It's definitely not perfect and it can be a bit of trial and error, but you can definitely use this as a starting point for your character animations. Plus the software has only just been released, so I'm sure it's going to get better with time. So give it a try and share your creations down in the comments below or over on our Facebook group. Big shout out to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we can make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like so we know what to make next. Or just let us know what you need help with down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos just like this one. You can find loads of CG training, assets and resources on our website, cgshortcuts.com or become a member to access exclusive premium content. That's it for now, here's a few more videos you might like.